Many people think Excel is just a spreadsheet for basic calculations, but in the right hands, it can pull off things you'd normally need SQL, Power BI, or Python for. So in this video, we'll go over 10 skills the modern analyst should know to turn Excel from a simple spreadsheet to a powerful analytics tool. Let's get into it. First up, many users think that Excel only works with static numbers, so here I would need to manually write Microsoft stock price, and then next time it updates, I would need to manually change it. But instead, if you're a modern analyst, you should know that there is this whole data area, and within it, we can select the stocks part. So I'm selecting these different stocks that I have, press on the stocks button, give it a second to load, and you'll notice it's been able to identify each of these companies. I can go to this plus sign, and from here, I can go ahead and find the current price. And this is going to update whenever it changes. In this case, we've just looked at it for stocks, but it also applies for something like the country demographics. But actually, even better than that is that we can import data from the web. For instance, over here, you can see that I have the driver standings for Formula One, and I want to try to import this entire table. So I'm just going to take the entire URL, copy that. And then in here, I'm just going to go over to from web. Once that's done, all I need to do is paste the URL in here, press on OK, and then just connect that. If we go over to this preview area, you can see that we now have the points for all of these different drivers in Formula 1, so I can just press on Load. It's opened up a new tab, and you'll notice that it's going to add all of the data in it. Best part is, this is a live connection, so if there's any changes to the website, all we need to do is press on Refresh to get it imported in Excel. Awesome, now moving up to the second skill, when you find a dataset like this, a beginner Excel user will just try to format it manually, so maybe you might select the header area and click on this part to change the colors like this. There's nothing wrong with that, but it is a bit tedious. Instead, a more advanced Excel user will just press Ctrl T to format the, that entire area as a table. We now have the header and you can see we have different highlight colors for each row. Once this area is converted into a table, the nice thing is that the header row freezes. So as I scroll lower down, you'll notice this area now changes to the name of the header. So we always know that this part right here is the expenses, even though we don't see the original header. That's not all though, we can also add the total row, so that's gonna be at the very bottom. Right now it's got the sum of all expenses, and actually with this drop down, we can easily change that to say the average expense. And I can also apply that to all of the other columns in this row. Finally, when using tables, it also accounts for anything new that I add. So suppose I add a new row in here, Q1, you'll notice that the formatting goes all the way down to the bottom. That also means that if I had any formulas like expenses, let's say plus 10 randomly, if I were to add more data in here, like a Q2, that also gets accounted for on the bottom. One of the big complaints about Excel is that formulas are sometimes hard to read, but as a modern analyst, you should know that we also have the name manager as an option. So suppose over here we want to find out the sales for 2026, and if you do the sales for 2025 and multiply that by 1 plus the growth rate, so this is the C2, close up parenthesis and hit enter, that's how you would find out the growth rate. But now we've got this C2 area and the E5 area, which doesn't look that nice, and it might not be easy to read, especially for more complex formulas. Instead, what you can do is go to that growth rate, that C2, and rename it. On this top left hand side, I can call this the growth rate, like that. Hit enter, and now for this area here, I would select this previous one, and multiply that by in parenthesis 1 plus, and just type the growth rate. It's that simple this time, close the parenthesis and hit enter, so now it's a lot easier to know that we're referring to the growth rate in here. Right now we just took one value, but we can also take an entire range. For instance, let's suppose I want to take all of the sales in 2025, I would just highlight that entire area or select it, and go up in here and call it the sales 2025 and hit enter. So now I could just do the sum of the sales 2025 like that, and you can see it selects that entire area. Overall, not only does this make it a lot easier to read a formula, so over here it's very obvious we're looking at the sales for 2025, also it can make it a bit faster than having to select an entire area every time, and finally it makes it a lot more error proof, because it's not like you might sometimes miss the last cell, we have everything selected with this name tag. Awesome, next up we've got dynamic arrays, let me show you what that means. Over here you can see we have some students, their subject and their grade, 
Suppose that we want to give all of them a 10 point bonus, so let's see what the new grade would be. You might think of just selecting this one and adding 10 to it, hit enter there and then dragging this all the way down to the bottom. But actually, if you're a modern analyst that knows a bit about dynamic arrays, you would do this slightly differently. You would simply select the equal sign up top, select all of these and just add 10 to them. Hit enter and you'll see that that spills down all the way to the bottom and you'll know it's a dynamic array because it's got these blue lines all around it. The first one seems to be actual formula but the second one is just grayed out and this saves Excel quite a bit of computing power as it doesn't have to do that same formula or in this case maybe 10 times but in a bigger data set it can be hundreds or thousands of times. Even better than that if we wanted to select the whole area from the side maybe you would think of selecting this and then just copying that cross kind of like that and copying it to the side. Now it's got so many calculations that it's doing at once that can be quite a lot of heavy lifting. Instead, in that same equal sign, you can just select that entire area and it's going to create another dynamic array like this. The nice part about it is that you'll know that all of these are just based on this one formula. If something changes in here, someone tries to change it, you'll notice that it gives us spill error so it guarantees that it's going to be a clean data set that's fully linked. Moving up to number 5 and whenever there's a chance a modern analyst will try to use Power Query instead of just plain Excel for data cleaning. Over here you can see we have a data set that's got a few errors, especially here in the name column. But if we just use Excel we're going to need to add helper columns. These are basically extra columns that we would need to add like this. To make any changes like maybe I choose a proper function in here to actually capitalize only the right areas then I might need to use the trim function so I remove any excess spaces from this part and the list goes on but you can see I keep creating new columns which isn't ideal. Also I need to remember the names of all of these different formulas that I need to use so instead we're gonna look at how to do all of this much more easily with Power Query by going to data and clicking on from table slash range, this is our table area and I'm gonna press on OK. That's gonna open up the Power Query Editor as you can see right here. Now suppose I wanna make the changes to this name column, that's actually quite easy, I just need to select that area, go over to transform and here under the format I can just choose to trim it and so now I have all the excess spaces gone and I can choose to capitalize each word and now you can see that it's nice and clean. As you can see, Power Query is much more intuitive and I just need to click on a few buttons. That's not all though, suppose that I want to combine the department and the region. So I can just select these two by pressing the control key. From here, I'm gonna press on merge columns and I don't need to use any formulas like text join for this one. As a separator, let's say that we just want to have a comma in between and press on OK. That's going to generate a whole new column as you can see right here that's merged and it's got a comma in between. Once you're done with the whole cleanup process you just need to go over to the home area and press on close and load. That's going to take it back to Excel with the new updated data. And if you want to learn more Excel, Power Query and a lot of other in-demand data tools I'd recommend you check out our data analyst program. It consists of five individual courses and over 300 lessons. First, in Excel, you learn best practices for formatting formulas and charts. Then you'll apply your skills with real-life case studies from data cleaning to building a dynamic financial model. Then in Power BI, you'll dive into data visualization and create interactive dashboards. Thirdly, in SQL, you'll work with larger databases, writing SQL queries. Fourth, in Python, we'll start with the basics and eventually advance to analyzing real crime data in LA and even building a model to predict housing prices. Finally, in VBA and macros, you'll learn to automate tasks like generating pivot tables, PL reports, and much more. So click on the link in the description below to get started with the data analyst program today. Next up, we've got simplifying formulas with symbols. Let me show you what I mean. Over here, you can see we have the first name and the last name. To combine these, you might think of using the concat function or even the text join function, but actually a much easier method is just by typing equals, selecting the first name, ampersand, and the second name. It's really that easy. Right now though, it doesn't have any spaces, so I can just put two quotations, space here, quotation again, 
and another ampersand. So we're saying max, I want a space, and then I want Merstappen. Hit enter there and drag this down all the way to the bottom. How awesome is that? And I know what you're thinking, why not just use the flash fill? And let me show you the key difference. With the ampersand, if this changes to let's say leak, that's going to update automatically. But if I change this to using the flash fill, so I, I'm gonna type max Lee here, and then control E to drag this to the bottom. Now, if I change from Lee to Merstappen, you'll notice that it doesn't update anymore, which is why the ampersand might be a better choice. Great, that's just one example though, so let's go over another symbol. Over here, you can see that we have some products, the price and the quantity, and the revenue, which is simply the multiplication. The thing is, we've got all these zeros on the bottom, and I know what this user is thinking, they probably just wanna be able to account for any future values. So if I add new ones in here, you'll see that those are going to update. So that's a good idea, but having these zeros here on the side, looks like I've got a big error or something. So instead, what we can do is use the dot operator. So in here, after the colon, you just wanna add a dot. Same thing over on this side, add the dot. And you notice it gets rid of all of the zeros. That said, what's gonna happen if we add new data in here? Well, you'll notice quickly that it actually updates accordingly. So it does the same thing, but without that ugly zero on the side. That's just two symbols though. There's many other awesome ones like the double dash or the hash, which I actually have videos on in my channel. Great, now moving up to number seven. And over here, you can see we have this data. And suppose that I wanna find out all of the revenues by category. So for books, what was the total revenue? So the sum of the revenue, same thing for clothing, etc. And typically you might think of using a pivot table, but oftentimes that changes the formatting and it might not be all that you want. So instead there is a new tool called group by. All I need to do is type the group by formula in here. The rows are all of the different categories, comma. The values are all of the revenues. And as the function, I'm just looking for the sum of the revenues by category. So I'm gonna put a sum in here. Close a parenthesis and hit enter. It's really that simple. Now you can see we have that full breakdown, much like a pivot table. And there is a fair bit of customization too. Let me quickly show you. Once I put a comma again, you'll notice we have all of these different options that are in square brackets, which means that they're optional. So I can choose to add the headers, like the category and the revenue. Let's see, I'm gonna go for yes and show. So that's number three. You can see that clearly shows the top part, but maybe we don't want the totals at the bottom. So I can easily change that too. Put a comma again. And as the total depth, I'm gonna go for no totals and hit enter. How easy is that? When it comes to Excel automation, most people just think of using macros, but actually a modern analyst is going to consider using office scripts instead. Let me show you what those are. Over here under the automate tab, you'll notice that we have all of these different scripts. If I click on this dropdown, you can see a bit more of them and I can go over to all scripts. These are basically some pre-recorded sample macros or scripts that you can easily use. To show you an example, let me first convert this into a table with control T over here on the side. And now I'm gonna go for highlight blank cells. Run that and you can see that it's highlighted this one. If I add a value, it's going to update automatically. And if I remove a value from here, that's going to get highlighted in yellow too. So you can see how cool that is. We really only needed to press one button. That's one example, but now let's suppose I want a drop down of all of these countries. So I'm gonna select them and go over to make drop down. Give it a second to load. And now on this top left hand side, I have this drop down with all of the countries listed. And you might be thinking with a normal macro, I can just record one, so make it more custom. And luckily we can do that here with Office Scripts too. So I can just press on new script. Then I'm going to click on record actions. And now it's recording everything I do. So let's suppose I select this entire area right over here. And I'm gonna make sure that this is all formatted with only one zero. So only one decimal, let's say, put a one in here and hit okay. You'll notice what it's doing on the side. It's actually explaining all of the different steps we're taking. We can easily remove them as we see fit. When I press on stop, we're gonna have this as a recording that's available. How awesome is that? And as you become more and more proficient in Excel, we'll move on to number eight, which is using the specials. And by that, I mean firstly the go to special button. So for that, just press the F5 key 
that's the shortcut and press on special. The other way to get there is simply by going over to find and select, go to special. Within this area, we can actually have a ton of different shortcuts for getting to different places within a worksheet. So I can say only select the errors. So under formulas, I'm gonna click on errors only, press on okay, and you'll see all of these get highlighted. And I can easily change them all at once. Let me say I just wanna put NA for them. So I'm gonna type NA on the first one and control enter to change all of the errors at once. That's just one example though. From here, we can also change different things like only highlighting the blanks or so much more as you can see. That's one side of the specials and the other specials available in Excel are the pasting ones. So you'll notice, let's suppose I copy this area right here and on the side, I've got all of this paste special option and the shortcut there is Control Alt V. So Control Alt V here and I can choose from this cell, maybe I just wanna take the value. So I don't wanna see all of this blue formatting. You can see what that looks like, Control Alt V again. We can even do some operations like basic arithmetic here on the bottom. The examples we've seen so far don't actually use any AI, but a modern analyst will know that Excel is adding a ton of AI features like the copilot function. With it, you can literally type a normal sentence and get an answer. For instance, over here, suppose I wanna find out the categories for each of these different transactions. So you can see the categories lifted, listed on the left. So I can type copilot and as the prompt in quotations, I just need to write categorize each transaction, close the quotations, select the transactions and then comma again and then in quotations again based on these categories which are all of the categories listed on the side. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. And you'll notice this makes a lot of sense. A Starbucks coffee is considered food, Walmart groceries is shopping, an Uber ride is transport, so it's really like a smart X lookup. How awesome is that? And while the Copilot formula is still quite new, there's actually a lot more new Excel features which you can learn with this video over here, or you can also take our Excel course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.